Hello, this is Stephen McNutt from DenseMode.com. Today, we're going to build a Flex VPN server with next generation encryption. So, before we start building, let's talk a minute about what we're going to build and what the routing design is going to be. So, there is going to be primarily four devices involved in this design. There's going to be R2, and this is going to be our Flex VPN server and then R3, R4, and Firewall 2 are going to be our clients. Each one is going to use a slightly different tunnel type. So the R3 is going to use a IPv4 over IPsec tunnel. R4 is going to use a GRI over IPsec tunnel. And Firewall 2 is going to use a crypto map. We're going to have two different kinds of traffic patterns in this design. So the first, the first traffic pattern is what R3 and R4 are going to use. This is a centralized internet access traffic pattern. So what's going to happen is we're going to form these, these two tunnels like this. And let's see if I can't. I don't think I can change the color easily. Then what will happen is this, when those tunnels come up, they'll, uh, this, there'll be a default route that points to the tunnel. And all traffic is going to flow across the tunnel. So if it's destined for, say, stuff at the data center, it'll go this way. If it's traffic that's bound for the internet, it'll come out and go through the firewall and back out like this. And that's the way both of these are going to work. So they're going to they're going to go through the data center or through the point of presence up here to get anywhere. So that that's going to be our first traffic pattern. The second traffic pattern is a more traditional pa traffic pattern, which is what branch three is going to demonstrate for us. And that is uh, we're when they this is going to be a direct internet access or DIA type of design. So to get to the internet, they're just going to hit the firewall, and uh, if the firewall doesn't if the traffic doesn't match a crypto map, then we're going to go straight out to the internet. But if the crypto map matches traffic that belongs to the company, then it'll go across the tunnel and then through R2 and then up that way. So that's the, that's the basic design. And we're going to secure all this using next generation encryption. And let's, so let's look at what that means. Okay, so this is like a really nice. There's there's a several documents I'm going to reference as I go through this, and of course I'll put I'll put the links up on the website. So this is a handy document that covers the next generation encryption, and uh, what we're going to use is uh, so there's there's crypto. We're going to have to define the crypto suites we're going to use for two different things. So there's there's the crypto suites that we're going to use for init which is the first part of Ike v2 and that's the initial secure tunnel that you act you set up to exchange the king material for the ipsec tunnel and then there's the crypto suites that then we're going to then negotiate through auth that will actually be used to secure our data traffic so there's there's two sets of crypto suites and we're going to we're going to use nge for both and we're also going to use nge for our initial authentication so looking in here these are all the different this is a table that goes through, you know, the strengths and weaknesses. Um, but what we're looking for is stuff that is marked NGE. So for our initial init, we're going to need, for init, we need, we need a pseudo random function. And let's pick one. So let's do, uh, let me see, let's use, here's our integrity algorithms, okay, status, okay, so how about SHA-384, that's considered uh, NGE, so that looks good, so we'll use uh, SHA-384. for our encryption this is something that I think is really cool which is that you, that you don't is not in any defaults which is kind of a bummer and that is uh, this guy here 
AES GCM. So what this means is this is a combined mode. So what that what that means is normally with these crypto suites you've got the encryption function and then you've got the integrity function and the integrity function is to, to make sure that the data hasn't been modified in transit and that uses a hashed message authentication code. But with the uh, GCM with the combined mode encryption that also includes uh, the integrity function so you don't have to have a separate HMAC. What's really cool about that I think it saves you like 8 or 12 bytes per packet and that's a significant amount of savings but not only does it save you that there's less computational overhead because you're just you're doing everything in one pass so AES GCM is like the best thing since sliced bread it's super awesome is so let's like we're gonna go ahead and rock AES GCM 256 and then finally uh, we need a Diffie Hellman group and there's a ton of them so let's see what they've got listed do they have those listed here uh, I don't see them oh here we go they got here they are Diffie Hell alternatives let's pick this other document this is from a Cisco support uh, from the Cisco support site, this guy wrote some really good stuff on encryption that's amazing. Um, I'll make sure to post the links to a couple of his things. What we're looking for are the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman groups, which are these guys right here. So groups 19, 20, and 21 use elliptic curve cryptography, which is uh, it's a type of asymmetric cryptography that's different than RSA, which has been the dominant form of really the only commonly used form of uh, asymmetric uh, encryption that's been used for since the 70s. But, but now elliptic curve has been around for a bit. And what's cool about it is uh, it's much less computationally intensive, right? So uh, there's an equivalency chart somewhere, but like off the top of my head, like a 384-bit elliptic curve has like the same strength as like a 1500-bit uh, RSA key or something. I mean, it's just like way more computationally efficient to use uh, EC. So let's we're going to go ahead and go with the uh, EC384 which is going to be Diffie Hellman group 20. And these group 20. So this is going to be our strong crypto suite for a knit. And like I said, notice we don't have to put in an integrity algorithm because we're using combined mode. So it's like one less thing we have to define, which is pretty rad. So then for auth, which is going to where we're going to have our uh, IPsec transform We're going to define, uh, we're going to use ESP, of course, and we're going to do uh, ESP, and we're the same thing. We'll just do uh, AES GCM 256, <laughs> and then, which means we don't have to do a sh an HMAC. So that's like literally the only thing we have to define. So that's, and we're covered for, for auth. So those are, those are going to be our crypto suites. Now let's talk about how we're going to authenticate the connections. We're not going to use pre-shared keys, we're going to use certificates, but we're going to step it up a notch and we're going to use uh, ECDSA SIG for our authentication. So that means we're going to use elliptic curve keys and we're going to use 384-bit elliptic curve keys um, for our, for, to authenticate our peers. So this is full on like next generation stuff, we're not taking any defaults. We're using strong state-of-the-art cryptography that we're going to use to build our baseline FlexVPN network. So sound good? All right. So I think we've done enough yapping. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go ahead and build something and uh, check it out. Okay. So coming back to the diagram, we need the first thing. Let me pause for just a second. Flex is kind of complicated. One of the things that I recommend when you're building anything in Flex is you really want to have a checklist. So this is like my basic workflow, and I'll sh I'll share this, uh, and and I think I may have already shared this like in a in a prior video, but I'll share it again. So before you even get started, 
when this, we just covered all this, right? Do we understand the design? We checked out the routing. We discussed the tunnel types. We went over the cipher suites we were going to use. We didn't cover the naming of the objects, so let's do that now. We'll just say we're going to use. Uh, we're going to call. We'll call our. Uh, we'll call our crypto suites strong. Strong. And we'll call uh, profile Ike v2 Ike v2 stuff Ike v2 stuff uh, flex VPN. It's easy enough. So that's what we'll use for our naming convention, just to keep it really straightforward. So um, just two things. And zipping through here. Uh, normally, um, before you start building, you want to turn up NTP or check the clocks. We're just going to do it live and not do that part because we just want to get to the fun part. Uh, before you start configuring, double check your addressing. Usual stuff, right? Make sure you have layer two, layer three reachability between your your, your hosts so you don't end up doing chasing your tail later. Uh, if we're going to use v VRFs, which in fact we are going to use that as I discussed in our centralized internet access part uh, sites, we're going to need to use VRFs to put the uh, internet facing inter the service provider facing interfaces into an underlay uh, then uh, then all that once all that sort of those preliminary checks are done we're going to generate keys we're going to create a trust point and there's little things you can forget in the trust point uh, one of the things that I commonly often forget is to make sure to uh, declare the key pair you're going to use so let's put a little reminder for me there. Because I can't tell you how many times I forgot to put the key pair in there. And then I didn't realize until after I've generated the certificate that the that it's wrong. <laughs> and I have to delete everything and, and redo the trust point and it sucks. And so once you've done that, created your trust point for your crypto, for your certificate, you go ahead and roll the router. Then uh, on the router, we're going to create uh, we're going to create a certificate map. And I'll show you what that certificate map is for when we get into it. Uh, we're also going to use uh, access lists. And the access lists are actually going to be for a couple different things. On our routers, we're actually going to use them to define routes to advertise. So it's going to be like a really neat feature that I'm really excited to show you. And then also uh, with Ike v2, we're going to have an authorization configuration. This is like an, another config block that's new that you don't see in Ike v1. That's part of what makes it really cool, even if it's confusing at first. And because we're not using defaults, we got to go through and define the things. So we're going to define our proposal, our policy, our profile, and then our IPsec transform and profile. And we'll build our tunnels, and then we'll go ahead and apply the IPsec profile to the tunnels on uh, routers three, two, three, and four. And then on, on firewall one, uh, firewall two, obviously we'll be applying crypto maps since that's a little bit different. So. Uh, Highly recommended before you build something with Ike V2, you do something like this where you make yourself a little checklist so that you can just kind of flip back to it and make sure that you don't forget a step and it it ends up being a lot faster that way. All right, so let's start with our Flex server, which is going to be R2. And let's bring him up right here. Okay. So show IP routes. What do you got for a route? Okay, we got a we got a currently we have a zero zero route that is pointing towards the service provider, but as we discussed, we're going to do a we're going to do a little different design, so we're going to eliminate that and we're going to we're going to make some changes here. So let's remove that. Well, let's first let's use it for testing. Ping two three dot one. 0.113.1 reachable. Okay, that's good. So, show run section IP route. <laughs> okay. Do show run verf. Okay, we have no verfs to find. So that was that's something we need to find. Let's define our verf. So, where did I put our Okay, and then we're going to define our. Let's, one thing I this is another thing I recommend is when when you do things like define verfs, just for, always use the same for tunnel interfaces and verfs and all that. Always use the same thing on every router to keep it consistent. This is I could spend 
five hours talking about why that's a good idea, but we're not going to. I'm just going to do it. So we're going to call our verf transport 2. And the reason why we're going to call our verf transport 2 is because we're going to use service provider 2. And so we're just going to call it transport 2. Later on, if we decide to use service provider 1, then we can use verf transport 1. So that's why I'm doing that. So this is going to be the name of our verf. Okay. So let's put the interface in the verf. Show run interface. G2. Jesus. You shall run. There's G2. Okay. There's, uh, first, we got to define the VRF, right? VRF definition. Uh, add the address family to it. FSG2. Burf. Forwarding VRF four transport two, and when you add an interface to verf, it deletes the IP configs. That's why I always do like a show interface, so I can just copy paste the inter IP address back in after putting it in the verf. Show verf. Okay, rad. We now have a verf. When we have an, we have our provider facing interface in the verf. Now we need to create a default route that points to the provider so that all of our traffic will forward correctly. Okay, it's working. Well, that took a while. Okay. So that's working. Show verf. Show verf. Okay, that took a lot longer than it should have, so I just need to calm down a little bit and dig in. So we've got we've done that part of the just the basic checks, just like we have listed here. So now, according to our checklist, our next step is going to be to generate keys. So let's go ahead and do that. So first thing I would always do is before creating keys, make sure you don't already have keys. You can really make a mess if you've got keys and then you make new keys because if those old keys were used for any certificates or anything, then you could just you could break a lot of stuff real quick by unintentionally overriding the old keys. So we'll do show crypto key my pub key all. And there's no keys, so we're good to go. But always check to see if you have keys. So we're going to do crypto key generate EC key size 384. That is the biggest key you can create. Uh, and then we'll do a label. Very important to label your keys. So you can have multiple keys to manage your router. So we'll do rt.densemode.com EC. Okay, so now we've done that. Let's go back and look at our checklist now. Create trust point. Okay, cool. So now we're going to do our trust point. Crypto PKI trust point. Trust point. And we'll just do DM for dense mode. CA for certification authority. And EC for elliptic curve. And with the elliptic curve keys, you can do a enrollment over secure transport for in-band enrollment which uh, is not supported by Microsoft PKI, which is what we're using here. So we're going to do a terminal enrollment. So in order to do that, we have to let the router know we're going to do enrollment terminal. Uh, then the next step is going to be to uh, set the subject name. Subject name. Actually, let's do the key pair first. Uh, EC key pair, r dense dense mode.com C. Okay, and then we'll do the subject name. Uh, subject name, and then it's this this format here. So we'll do rt mode.com and then we'll do it uh, for for the OU. We'll call it T organization equals dense mode. US. And I think that covers the I 
think that's all we need to worry about here. And we're going to do revocation checks on the, the hub router. On the branch routers, we're going to disable revocation checks. There's a bit of a chicken and egg problem where if the certificate is, if you've got to check the certificate when the server, the PKI server you use for the, the check is on the other side of the tunnel, it's a chicken and egg issue. And besides, you're really enforcing certificate validity at the hub router anyway. So we'll disable it, but we're, not, we're actually going to enforce it here. We'll, we'll disable it on the hub routers or branch routers. So that looks pretty good. So now the next step is we, we have to authenticate, which means we're going to paste in the certificate for the CA and attach it, bind it to this trust point definition. So the way we do that is crypto PKI authenticate, and then we specify dense mode CAEC like that. And then we need a base64 encoded version of the certificate from our certification authority and that's what this happens to be right here so we'll just copy this and we'll paste it into the router bam like that yes and then the next step is we're going to crypto pki enroll the same thing dense mode cac nope no serial number nope no ip address yes to place a certificate to the terminal so this is our certificate signing request. So we're going to copy that. We're going to hop over to our certification authority. We're going to paste it into our submit certificate request. And by the way, the instructions and the walkthrough on building up this certification authority is in another video. The link will be in the blog article. And perhaps it'll be in the when I post the YouTube video. So we're going to put that in there. And bam, we got a certificate. So we want base64 encoded, download certificate, save as, and we'll call this R2. And then we'll go and go to the folder. And since we encoded it as base64, it's a text file. So just grab that. So that is our issued certificate. It never hurts if you're if you're in production. You would always want to carefully inspect your certificates after you create them. So we'll, we'll just check this first one. So as we can see, signature algorithm is SHA-384. And our public key is an ECC public key. Public key parameters ECDSA. So it's, it's signed with an elliptic key. And it's an elliptic key certificate signed by an elliptic key CA. So everything is good. You can have mixed certificates. That's one thing you have to be really careful for. Uh, for example, you could create an RSA certificate and have it signed by, by an EC certification authority. And you can very easily make mistakes like that. So you really need to be careful with that and make sure you're using that, the right key pair. And that's why it's so important to think about what you're doing when you label your key pairs and associate them with your trust point. Or you could end up with something that is not what you were expecting and then shit's not gonna work. But this is all good. This is a proper, this is an elliptic curve certificate that's been signed by an elliptic curve certification authority and everything is in order. So let's go ahead and pop that guy in there. So the command for that is crypto PKI import. And then you put in the CA DM CA EC and then you tell it what kind of file it is. So in this case it's a certificate. And paste it in like that. So now we have it. So we can do show crypto <laughs> I don't know why I have a hard time spelling it. Do show crypto PKI certificates. And I think it's verbose. Yeah. So here we go. So this is it. I believe this is yeah here, here we go. So this is, if you remember in our trust point, we defined this subject name and now you can see those fields in there. So why is that cool? Because when we go to create certificate maps, we can match on this stuff. It's very handy. So this is the information about the issuer. And then this is, this came from the issuer. And this is all the different information about what it can be used for and like all the useful things. So we have like a, we have this really nice key now and we 
we've got a trust point so everything is good so what I'm going to do is basically wash rinse and repeat for the other two routers I'll go ahead and pause the video because we're already at 30 minutes and we were just at the beginning here but what I'll do is after I've done the other two routers I'll come back and unpause and then I'll show you the uh, the ASA it's pretty much the same but since it's a different kind of device we'll walk through that the enrollment and then we'll we'll go ahead and start building up the the uh, Ike V2 stuff okay so I've enrolled router 3 and router 4 and like I mentioned they were exactly the same as R2 with the exception of one thing which is uh, PKI uh, trust points let's take a look in here DM CAEC and that is uh, we set the revocation check to none on the on but just on the spokes we, we enforce the revocation check from the hub router so let's hop back over to the firewall here and the steps are pretty much the same so it's just uh, we check to make sure we don't have keys already and the commands are pretty much identical so it's just crypto key generates and you can see it's a little different you see and see it's now it says elliptic curve instead of key size so you got to use a context sensitive help a lot because the ASA just has to do everything a little bit different and notice we didn't get the option to do the label so we need to put the label first label and this router is named incorrectly uh, host name FW2 I see show interface IP brief. Let's make sure we're on the right one. Yeah. And that's an incorrect IP address. We'll fix that later. Okay. Now let's do a ping. Do the basic checks. Yeah, it's good. So we'll do a. So let's generate the key. My key, my pub key. Crypto key generate TC label FW2 mode.com EC and then we set the elliptic curve to 384 bits. Notice that the firewall supports 521 bit keys, but iOS only supports 384, so it's kind of interesting. Okay, so now we have keys. Do show crypto key my pub key. Let's see, I don't use the do command on the firewall. So much fun. There it is. Okay, so it's there, and it's a 384-bit elliptic curve key. Always good to verify before you move forward. Crypto P and here instead of crypto PKI, it's crypto CA. So it's slightly different. It's just a, just enough differences to keep you kept uh, checking the uh, the help. DM CA C. Uh, and and they here the commands are the same. Roman terminal. Uh, no, nope. key pair command's different, isn't it? Yep, key pair. Key pair, w1 dot dot dense mode dot com. And let's double check and make sure we named our pair correctly. There it is. Just copy paste it just to make sure. And let me see. Roll revocation check. None. Uh, then we'll do the subject name. Double. Yep, except that. So we'll do the same thing. Common name equals w2.densemode.com uh, equals IT department. 
organization equals dense mode country equals US and it looks pretty good so now let's authenticate it crypto CA authenticate CA certificate, paste it in, and it's a little different, we have to click quit, okay, cool, so now we have to do the enrollment, crypto CA enroll, DM CA EC, no, yes, so here's our certificate signing request, which we will then copy Tote that over to our elliptic curve certification authority. Ask for a certificate. We get one. Download. Save as. Call this one Firewall 2. There's our certificate. Grab it. And paste it. Crypto CA import mode EC certificate. That's the same. Paste it in. Quit. Okay, rock and roll. So everybody's everybody's enrolled. So congratulations, we've now, we've now gone through and we've verified IP reachability, we've configured VERFs on these three routers, we've enrolled all four of our devices using our, our super bitchin' Turbo Kung Fu Elliptic Curve Certification Authority right here that we built in a, another episode. In our next video, we'll continue on with our build where we'll go ahead and uh, turn up the Flex VPN server on the head end router here on R2. Uh, until then, I hope you enjoyed this video and got something useful from it. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, also visit densemode.com to get more information and see other blog posts and videos. Thank you and have a great day.